This device can measure anything, anything, even the flatness of the earth. Nah guys, just kidding. But I think this will finally get to be the best multimeter for makers and small electronics projects. This is my new version of the two-hand multimeter, made with Arduino and capable of measuring all these units and a lot more to come, because this is getting better by the day. I was tired of trying all types of sliders and switches and I decided to make my own dial. So this time this project is made out of two PCBs, the multimeter and the dial, and it works better than expected. I also spent a few days designing a better enclosure, so in this video let me show you what we have new, share all the files with you for the code, the part list, the PCB files and the 3D enclosure, so you could make your own. So guys, let's get started. What's up my friends, welcome back. Now this is my new version of the PCB that I've made for the project and it has a few new parts and I bet that you will like them. I want this to be the best multimeter for makers and small electronics projects. The PCB evolved a lot and it all started with a prototype that was made on a prof board, then my first multimeter PCB which was kind of big and also ugly, and this here was also one of my previous attempts but still had some errors. And I've even made a dev board to test the option of using relays instead of switches and sliders. But you'll see why I've decided to make my own dial system instead of sliders or commercial sliding switches. So if you want to make the same project, you can download the Gerber files from below and check all the parts and schematics on electrobes.com. Then you go to pcbway.com and click the code now button. And here we add the size of the PCB and the amount. And to get the $5 offer, select the 5 PCBs. And for the color, I went with red this time. I save to cart and here on the next page, you upload the Gerber's files that you have just downloaded from my website. Now place the order and just in a few days, you receive some awesome PCBs from PCBWay. And remember that we need 2 PCBs for this project. The main multimeter and this dial, which is just a circle. And the reason it has multiple holes is because I wasn't sure which type of pins I will use, so I've placed a lot of them. And now that I've decided which one to use, I will make the second PCB with only one row of holes. And the PCB looks awesome as always. So we can start with the project. So first, why is this multimeter better than others, or at least in my opinion? Why not a commercial and professional multimeter like this one? For sure this professional multimeter will be better, right? Well, it depends on what use you give it. You see, my projects are not that professional, and I don't usually work with CAT3, 600 volts, or any kind of high voltage. So why would I need such a professional meter? 90% of the time I use the multimeter in continuity mode to detect short circuits, I use it to measure resistance and capacitance values, or check the diodes or LEDs and see if they still work or not. As for the voltage, my projects usually work at 5 volts and a maximum of 24 volts, so I don't need any high voltage meter. And best of all, my meter is very small. And why is that good? Well, because when I work, my workshop table is usually full of stuff, components, parts, PCBs and much more. So having this huge multimeter on my table is awful. Most of the time the wires get tangled with other wires and almost always I drop something on the floor with these wires. And the worst of all, this meter is so big that I have to put it on the table and then use the probes to measure. But I would like to be able to measure directly and have the value in front of me. That's why a two-hand multimeter is way better. Just connect it to what you want to measure and it will show you the value in front of you. So it's small, simple and fast and that's all what I need. And is able to measure all these units. So why would I need more? Ok, so what we have new on this PCB? Well, first of all, the dial in the middle. You see, if you check the schematic, you will see that for each type of measurement, we have a different block. If these blocks share the positive and negative probe, it will give me a lot of errors. So we need to keep them separate, especially for the current mode. 
For my previous versions I've used a rotary switch to do that, one like this one. But as you can see this is way too big for my small two hand multimeter. So for a different version I wanted to use some sliding switches. But you see with only one switch that wasn't enough. I needed to add two and also gave me problems because the switches had to move at the same time. And then I decided to test the automatic mode switch using relays on a dev board like this one. And that worked quite well but having a relay in between the probes added some small voltage drop, more resistance and the worst of all the current was limited to only low values otherwise the relays would burn out. They were getting quite hot. That's why the best option was to make my own dial. On the PCB we have 5 sets of pads and this is enough for more than 8 different modes. And then the dial will use this kind of springy pins. So by rotating the dial we can change the mode and have different connections. Another difference from my previous versions is the use of a different chip for measuring the current. Because for my previous version I was using a Hall effect module and that's not very reliable, especially for switching signals. This time I'm using a shunt module with the INA 219 IC and is capable of measuring current and power. And the board also has a Bluetooth module so we can send the values to a smartphone app and that would be very interesting. It uses the IDS-111C ADC so we have plenty of precision with a 16 bits ADC. It also has a charging circuit so we can charge the battery with a USB cable. I won't go over the full schematic because I've already done that for my previous versions and the rest is quite the same. Except this part here with the pads representing each connection for the dial for each mode. So get the PCBs and download the schematic from below and I solder all the components. I've took the chip from an old Arduino Nano clone. So we start with that mega chip, the resonator and the pull-ups and then all the resistors, capacitors and the sensible ICs such as the ADC, the up-amp and the current meter. I won't add the Bluetooth module yet. As for the OLED screen, well I've made a very dumb mistake. I've placed it backwards. As you can see it goes the other way around. But don't worry I've already corrected this error on the PCB that you download. But in my case till I receive the new corrected board I will sort of with some thin wires a separated OLED display like this one and that should work for now. So using thin wires I connect power, ground and the I2C wires. Once everything is in place I add the dial on top with a screw. It will get better once I also add the enclosure that I've designed for this project. I connect this FTDI module to the UART pads and I open the code. Read it line by line to understand more but it's pretty much the same as for the previous versions. We detect the mode and inside each mode we use the formulas to measure each value. I recommend you to check my previous videos about the multimeter in order to understand how each block works. So compile and then upload it to the multimeter. And now as you can see by rotating the dial we can change between modes. Also by pushing the button we can change the extra modes such as continuity, maybe diode or frequency. When charging the red LED is turned on and when the battery is full the blue LED will turn on. I've been designing an enclosure as well. It has a few versions. First I printed this using PLA and my FDM printer. But if you want to get very small and also have good quality, the next versions were printed using a resin printer. The last two versions are these ones. One is very small but the other one also has a space for the negative probe. And this would get wrapped around like this and stay inside the socket, which is pretty nice, right? The dial also has these plastic parts. They get snapped on top of the dial PCB like this. Then I glue the screen on the top part. I pass the negative probe through the hole on the back. Then I solder it to the PCB and now I could close it. And I do that using some very small screws and that's it. Turn it on and start measuring. 
I can measure the voltage of any battery and values up to 60 volts, both in positive and negative mode. I can measure different values of resistors up to mega ohms, test for continuity on PCBs or maybe short circuits, test for diodes, reverse voltage. I can also measure all values of capacitance and also frequency. And then in current mode, I can now easily measure up to 2 amps or more, but I haven't tested more than 2 amps yet. And the PCB now also has a fuse for safety. So that's how I've made my new multimeter. So what do you think? And what would you add extra to this meter? Maybe I will order the PCBs with a different finish, so it would last longer for the friction between the dial pins and the pads on the PCB. Also I want to add a frequency generator mode and also temperature measurement. That would be quite easy, right? So check my website for the Gerber files, the schematic, the full code and the part list together with the 3D design. I hope that you will be able to make your own and maybe share your results with the community. If you like this project, comment below or give me a like. Thanks again and see you later guys. Hey guys, so that was another project and I hope that you like it. As you all know, to buy all these modules, a huge help from you is from Patreon. So if you want to support me, you can support me there, but also just commenting below, giving me a like or sharing this video, it will also support my channel. So thank you very much to all my patrons and to you guys.